Hey guys, what's going on? It's Skate, and welcome to a brand new series on my channel called Pinpointers. This is going to be where I am breaking down different things in the game, giving you guys a little bit of coaching tips, and today specifically we are going to be looking at the basics of the four and five step approach and how that timing should look. So first we're going to look at the four step, and we're going to make sure that this setup right here is as good as it can possibly be. If you don't have a good setup, it's really hard to have a good approach, almost impossible. So we want to make sure this setup is good so that the rest of the approach can fall into place. First thing you're going to notice is that my weight is evenly distributed both left to right and front to back on my feet. I'm not too far tilted forward or to side to side. Everything is kind of centered, nice and casual, relaxed in a very athletic position. My knees are slightly bent, my hips are slightly open towards my target, so that means for me, being a right-hander, my right hip is slightly behind my left hip, and my feet are the same way. I have my right foot slightly behind my left foot. This helps open up my entire body to get the ball going towards my target. You can see here that you don't see the ball from behind, and this is one of the biggest mistakes I see with bowlers that I work with. You want to make sure that that ball is lined up with the seam line on your shirt on your ball side shoulder. So for right handers you want to be lined up with your seam line on your shirt on your right sleeve and for lefties with the left sleeve. If you end up with the ball outside of your body to start that gets you in a bad position before you've started moving and you're going to end up pushing that ball to the outside of your body which is going to make it loop back behind your body and that just causes a whole lot of trouble. Your swing plane is kind of all over the place. It's hard to be accurate. You also notice that my right shoulder is slightly lower than my left shoulder. This is something that's pretty important too. You hear people all the time are saying, oh, you dropped your shoulder, you dropped your shoulder. Well, those are the old days. Now we want to drop that shoulder. We want to make sure that right shoulder is lower so that we can create a nice swing slot and get as much power into the bowling ball with this approach that we're doing as we possibly can. So make sure that right shoulder slightly dipped, everything is nice and relaxed, and the ball is on that seam line of your shirt, which pretty much lines up directly with your right eye for right-handers. Now let's look at the setup from the side. Uh, one thing you can definitely see here is that the weight of the ball is evenly distributed between the left and the right hand. You see that balance arm side hand is holding up some of the weight of that ball. That just helps the ball side arm be a little more relaxed. So that way when you start pushing the ball away, you're already in position to be relaxed and let that ball swing free. You also notice the ball is just above belly button height with the ball side arm roughly parallel to the floor. You want to make sure you don't start with the ball too high or too low as that can also cause you to get out of position pretty early in your approach. So you want to keep that ball somewhere between about shoulder height and waist height. You don't really want to go any higher than the shoulder and you don't really want to go any lower than the waist. So anywhere in between there that's going to be kind of personal preference and depend on what you're trying to accomplish on the lanes. Again, you see that the bowler isn't too lean forward. They're nice and relaxed with their weight centered over their feet. That keeps you from getting your head out in front of your feet and making your feet have the run to catch up to you coming into the foul line and making that swing just too steep. So again, make sure everything is nice and relaxed and centered on your feet in that setup. Now that we have the right setup, let's go ahead and get into that first step. You see here that that first step, the ball side foot moves out of the way and crosses over to come directly in front of the left foot, uh, and that helps to clear a path below your shoulder for the ball to swing. You also notice you still don't see the ball here. The ball has been pushed out, but it's not being pushed right. And the big thing here is that is one thing that many bowlers do incorrectly is they push the ball to the right for right-handers to the left for left-handers and that ends up getting your body out of position. Your swing actually doesn't need to go to the right because that ball is going to replace that right leg. So if you think about the ball going directly in front of that right foot as you push the ball forward that'll put you directly in line. You see the ball still pretty much lined up with that seam in the shirt and you notice that my shoulder angle hasn't changed here. It's still at the same angle. I haven't started leaning forward none of that has happened. My body is still in almost the exact same position it was in that setup. It's just now the ball has been pushed forward to begin that swing. Looking at that step from the side, you're going to see here that the left hand helped push that ball out. Uh, you see the left hand is just starting to come off the ball and a good way to think about it is as the weight of your body transitions to the ball side foot, 
it should also be transitioning to your ball side arm. So that kind of gives you the proper timing. You notice the ball has moved out roughly the same amount as my step was. So the ball and my toe are still pretty much exactly in line and that, that's about what you're looking for. You also notice that body position wise, I haven't started leaning forward and I've, I've kept my weight of my body still centered over my feet. You wanna make sure you don't allow that shoulder and your head to push forward as you push the ball out because that's again gonna get you leaned over and cause problems later in your approach. So make sure in that first step that you keep that shoulder quiet and don't allow it to move. So now moving into step two from behind, you're gonna see that the ball is directly below my head. You can draw a line from the center of my head straight through my arm and through the center of the ball. Because of that first step, like I said, going crossing over and going in front of my left foot, that has allowed me to create this swing slot that now the ball is going to swing below. If you don't get that foot crossing over, what ends up happening is the ball will belly around your hip because you haven't gotten your hip out of the way, and that makes the ball bounce out to to the outside of your body at the bottom of your swing here, and then it's going to wrap behind your back. So you want to make sure you get that crossover going in the right spot. You're going to notice with my left foot that it doesn't cross over. It's going to go straight forward from where it was roughly to the same spot on the same board, um, or it can go slightly towards the non-ball side. You're also going to notice that you start to create a little more angle with your shoulders here as you have now created room for that ball to swing. So now, now the body is in pretty much the exact position it will be in at the foul line. There's not a whole lot more movement from this point on. This is a really good position to be in. Now looking at step two from the side, you're going to see again that my head is directly over my foot. It's actually even slightly behind here. You're also going to notice that the ball is slightly behind my ball side knee and this is this is the position you want to be in in step two in a four step approach. If you can get the ball to this position, your timing is in a really good spot and you're ready for that approach to be good the rest of the way through. This is a very important step because this is the step that is setting up that power step that's gonna be step three. So make sure you can get this step as good as you possibly can. You want it to be lo longer than your other steps because this next step is gonna be a short step. So. The biggest thing to take from this is make sure you can get that ball in this position here. Now we are in step three and we're looking from the rear and you see again step three is going to be a crossover step in that four step. The reason is it just allows you to clear that hip a little easier as the ball comes down into your release zone and when, one thing you will notice here is that the ball has pretty much replace my head. It's directly behind my head and my hand is still inside of the ball. That is something that is very important and that's that's one thing that I see many bowlers is at this point their hand is already getting towards the outside of the ball and that makes it pretty difficult to create revs when your hand is already in its finished position and you haven't even started your downswing. The other thing with timing as far as this step is concerned is when you hit step three in a four step, the ball should be at its highest point in your swing. So you're going to see that the ball will never get higher than this point right here and that sets me up to have a strong powerful finish coming into the foul line. Here looking at step three you're going to see that I this is the actually the shortest step you will probably take in your approach and that's just to get you in a, in a powerful position. You notice you could draw a, a straight line from my balance arm through my ball side arm. Again like you can tell this is the highest point this ball is going to get. It won't get any higher than this and that sets you up to be in proper time to come into the foul line. Also take note that my body position hasn't changed much from the beginning still at this point. I'm still at somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees, probably closer to 15 degrees with my spine tilt and the reason for this is because if you get your feet too f or your shoulders too far forward in front of those feet you end up having to run to catch up to them and again that swing just gets way too steep so you want to make sure that you keep your head directly over your feet you don't want to get out in front of them now we are looking at probably the most important position through this entire process obviously all of it has to fall into place in order to get into this position but this position here is going to tell you whether or not you are properly in time 
So here, as my left foot comes in front of my, just in front of my head, you're going to notice that my arm, my ball side arm, is parallel to the floor. It's a little hard to see here because it's kind of blurry, but you can see that parallel line running with the floor and that's what you are looking for. If you can get yourself into this position, you are in a great position to have a strong follow through and release at the foul line and you will post your shot. This is a very important position. Just make sure as you watch your videos, see how close you are to this and see if you can't get yourself here and watch how much your shots improve. So at the release point, you're going to see that my right shoulder has dropped slightly. That just allows me to keep my hand a little more inside of the ball. And you see that the ball is again directly below my head. So if you think about that swing plane, that swing plane follows you, your head all the way through. The reason for that is because you, you want to be able to see what you're throwing at. And if you can keep the ball in the center of your head, that means it's in, in the center of your eyes. You also notice that here that the slide is on the same board that my power step was on that step three that that is something that you want to make sure you do you want to make sure you're not sliding away from your target because that causes you to fall off of shots and fall away and you end up losing leverage this is the most powerful leverage position you can get into with your slide is to slide on the same board that your power step is on you also want to make sure you're not sliding too far to the right that also can help kill leverage a little bit and it also gets your foot in the way of your release and makes you have to belly the ball around your foot. You also see here that my trail leg is nice and stretched behind me. This gives me really good balance at the foul line and makes me have a very wide base. This is something you want to look for just to keep you a little more balanced, a little easier for you to stay on that one foot. This is also true with my balance arm. You see my balance arm is stretched out to the left of me. This is helping to counteract that heavy weight that's hanging from my arm. Looking at that release from the side, you're going to see that my head is slightly behind my toe as well as my knee. If you keep if you can keep your chin behind your toe, this keeps you in the proper position and makes sure you don't end up with too much spine tilt going forward. If you end up with spine tilt too far where your head's out in front of your feet, that again creates that steep swing and drives the ball down into the foul line and you end up losing leverage. So you want to make sure you stay back on your shot. You sit on it. This is something that's very important. You see here that my trail leg is nice and stretched out like we talked about from behind. This keeps me very balanced. You can also see my balance arm slightly uh, going out away from my body to help distribute some of that weight of that bowling ball that heavy ball hanging from my arm and keeping my center of gravity more over my feet so that I'm not falling off to the side and finally with the four step we have the follow through and finish position here you can see that you can pretty much draw a line from my follow through from that ball side arm all the way through my body and it's going to be at an angle and directly through my trail leg and it's all one big continuous line this is a very strong and solid position at the foul line that will keep you on balance and help you transition as much of that momentum you're building up in your approach into that bowling ball that you're throwing down the lane. And that's the key to creating more strikes and better pin carry is transitioning momentum from your approach into the bowling ball. You see that I didn't come up out of the shot and I didn't fall off the shot. I'm nice and balanced, I stayed down, and that right hip stayed slightly below the left hip as well as the right shoulder is slightly below the left shoulder. My head is still in a good position, I'm still looking at my target, and my head hasn't moved all over the place, it stayed pretty well centered across my body. From the side in the finished position, you can see that my knee and my head have continued forward to where my t my chin and my knee have finished slightly in front of that slide foot. You also see that my trail leg is nice and extended in a nice long even line behind my body as well as my ba balance arm is still nice and stretched out. You can see that my follow through was long and my elbow is slightly bent but not cut short. My 
elbow stays long to help me feed through the ball and make that flat spot at the bottom that you're looking for in your release and that's what you want is a nice long and low follow through and part of that is making sure that that elbow doesn't collapse too early. You can see that my follow through goes right in front of my face and that is because the ball was directly below my head I want that follow through coming right to my nose. Looking at the five step approach you're going to see that it's exactly the same as that four step approach. The only thing you're adding is a little momentum step to get you going at the beginning. So for right handers you're going to take a small step with that left foot. For left handers it's going to be a small step with your right foot to get you going. From that point forward everything is going to be the same. Your setup is exactly the same. You're going to start with your feet just slightly open just like you did in that four step. Uh, every your body's going to be slightly open to your target everything's ready to go and once you get moving with that left foot as soon as that ball side step takes place now you're in a four step approach so everything from that point on is exactly the same step two which is step one in your four step is going to be where the ball's moving and then step three is going to be the ball directly below your head Step four, the ball will be at the top of swing. You will be in your power step. And then step five is your slide where you're going to be finishing into the foul line. Thank you all for watching. Here are two videos you might have missed that could help your game. On the left is my Language of the Pin series. It's where I break down how to make adjustments, things like that. And on the right is Between the Lines. This is where I break down how ball layouts work and kind of give you just a general idea of how those layouts are going to work. Make sure you click that red subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos as they come out. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.